Hello and welcome to the Down Under Visa Philippines to Australia podcast series. I'm your host, Jeff Harvey, Registered Migration Agent with Down Under Visa, the premier Australian migration agents in Manila, Philippines, specialising in visas for Australian Filipino couples. We hope you enjoy this podcast and hope it proves useful to you. Please feel free to share this with your partner and with any of your interested friends. Let's get started. Communication, the key to relationship success. Now, I just realised to my amazement well, when I wrote this article that I'd never actually written an article here specifically about one of my favourite topics, which is communication. Now, communication in relationships and how couples need to truly understand each other if they want a relationship to last, and how speaking, it may be a part of communication, but it isn't the whole story, and not speaking is definitely not part of communication. Now, if you want your Australian-Philippine relationship and or marriage to last, then uh, please listen. Now, communication in relationships. Communication in cross-cultural relationships specifically. Now, what is communication? Okay, here's the key for you to understand this. So you realise it's not just not talking or writing, etc. It's about getting what's in your head into another person's head intact meaning in one piece so they understand it so you didn't say one thing and they understood another. That's not effective communication. So into the what's in your head, into their head intact, not misinterpreted, not as a garble of confusing words. The end of a successful session of communication is that the other person gets you. And you know what? Personally, I think it's one of the best feelings in the world when someone truly gets you. Now, we need it, and relationships need it. Uh, Somebody pointed out to me uh, the other day that you you look on some of your Facebook groups and pages particularly, you you see a lot of times there were couples which are discussing, asking questions about things that they really should be talking with their, their partner about, and they're asking questions there. Now, if they're asking questions of strangers, or even friends, even those who go off and, you know, grizzle and groan to their friends about, you know, hubby did this or wifey did that, well, they're not communicating very well if they're doing that. Now, ideally, they should be sorting these things out together, and that's the sign of of a a good relationship that's going to last forever. Um... If people can't talk to one another, well, the chances are it's going to fizzle. Um, and you know what else? At the end of the day, uh, if you fail to get what's in your head into the other person's head, unless they block their ears and refuse to listen, it's your fault and not theirs. Now, your job is to make sure the message is clear and to work out whether they understood it or not. You don't get this by shouting at them or by walking off. And you certainly don't get this by blaming them. I guess it's just one of those bottom line things is that um, you know if you are busily pointing fingers well you, you're never going to solve something you're going to get you're going to express your annoyance and make the other person annoyed make the other person back off make the other person resentful but you, you're not going to you're not going to get close to them and you're not going to get again get what's in your head into their head And why this matters so much in a relationship is because you simply must understand each other if you are to function as a loving couple and as a team in a great partnership. This is the only way you can avoid build up hurt feelings which end in explosions of anger or those awful passive aggressive reactions like the dreaded tampo. Um, This doesn't happen, or certainly happens considerably less when you get each other. Now just to simplify that, uh, look, you'll see articles I've got about tampo, particularly on the Filipino wives page. Tampo I mean that's it's a girl thing particularly, but a lot of Filipinos do it. But particularly 
the ladies do this they keep things bottled up uh, and then they explode but they usually explode uh, in a passive aggressive way which I'll explain in a second meaning they don't talk to you they don't tell you what's wrong they you know they huff and puff and you know bang things together they storm off they'll disappear and not come back and you know you and won't to it doesn't matter what you say they won't talk to you um the local way of handling it is to do what they call malumbing which is an, what we'd call sucking up we'd be very very sweet to them and uh hopefully they just plain i'll get over it but the problem is the problem doesn't go away because you haven't communicated the problem remains and it's only going to rear its ugly head again so that's not that might be a cutesy way of doing it but it is not a way of handling it passive aggressive means okay is openly aggressive which is where you are uh, you know you yell and scream and shout at people and express your anger in a very open way a passive aggressive response is when somebody doesn't express their anger but they you know they're angry um and they show it by you know being awkward and difficult and huffing and puffing and making you feel guilty and awkward and things like that it's a a fairly dreadful way for <laughs> way to behave and it certainly doesn't uh, it doesn't help a couple to get close that's the thing now some communication basics look the natural reaction of many of us to hurt feelings is to get angry in fact it's probably the most natural basic thing in the world now look the drunken idiot who punches you in the pub or the ex-wife who wants to see you suffer yeah you can say that person intentionally wants to hurt you so what the heck you're probably quite justified in getting angry or to give them an earful um you're forgiven for not sitting the drunken idiot down and trying to understand what motivated his violent outburst and uh, for those who've had ex-wives there's you know you won't get a whole lot of luck sitting down and trying to have a deep and meaningful with them but the issue is here this is your wife, this is your fiancé, this is your husband, this is your life partner. Now, I think we can safely assume they didn't mean to hurt your feelings or to make you suffer. And therefore, some patience and an attempt to make things better, uh, it should override your temper. Your temper will not make things better and will not bring you closer. Uh, and I'm not being all righteous here i have a fiery temper by nature but uh, I, i'm at my best when i control it and i have to say as i'm getting older i'm better at it and i seem to be a much better peacemaker these days than i used to be uh, and so is my lovely wife for that matter so it can be done so uh, start with the assumption that they didn't mean you harm now it means taking a few deep breaths and deciding if it's better to try to fix this than to add fuel to the fire. You know that awful expression, fight fire with fire? When you really think about it, I mean, that, that's, it's pretty stupid when you really think about it. You fight fire with fire, it only leads to a bigger fire. And, the, and when it comes to solving a problem, you know, getting angry with your spouse is, only, is, not, is generally not going to fix a whole lot of things. It's generally just going to make them madder and then you madder and then before you know it you've got a great big blaze which and sometimes you can say things which are really hard to unsay so this is why you have to be really careful if you do care about the outcome of your uh, the future of your relationship so yes if you if you care about the outcome calm yourself down and think logically now more than likely you simply didn't understand each other now feel free to remind your angry hurt partner that this is you and that they know you would never intentionally hurt them. And of course say the same to yourself. You know, in other words, yeah, same thing. Say, this is my wife. She's firing off at me. Now, is it because she hates my guts and really wants to hurt me or is, it, is there a chance that you know, something's upsetting her? And, and, and care care enough that you will make the effort because end of the day it's better, better you both make each other feel better next point be prepared to listen now yes you get to say your piece and that's important but try to listen at least as much as you speak when dealing with a filipina expect expect 
the cultural norm of her shaking her head when you ask what's wrong. Um, this will take time. Don't, don't expect her to arrive in the country and two weeks later you, you've got this, you know, f fantastic, perfect flow of, uh, of perfect communication happening. Uh, the Filipino approach tends to be, um, yeah, just hope it goes away all by itself and not, uh, not to be active about it. So you ask what's wrong, chances are she'll shake her head. And even as years go by, you'll say, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. No, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. You, you go, no, no, I'm sorry, but I know there's something wrong. And I'm here, and I care about you, so will you tell me what's wrong, and let's see if we can fix this. And as time goes on, she'll realise that when she does tell you, and you do fix it, well, goodness, it means... <laughs> builds up a bit of confidence. It's more likely that she's going to do it again. So, But, yeah, it'll take time. The Filipino approach to communication is usually not to confront, never to explain and hope the problems simply blow over at their own accord, but I mean, but they don't. Look, my analogy has always been... Remember you'd see those things in cartoons when you were a kid of somebody sweeping dirt under the rug, you know, instead of scooping it up with the, with the um, dustpan and tossing it out, you sweep it under the rug. Now... It, you, you, can, you compare that to problems, you sweep it under the rug, keep doing that, and what do you get? You get a big lump in the rug, and you keep tripping over it, uh, and it, it, will, that will rem it will remain there until you remove it, and it's the same with any problems and misunderstandings. You've got to be prepared to face them, face them and fix them and remove them. Next point is explain how you feel. Now, explain how whatever it was made you feel. You know, for example, when you made that major decision without discussing it with me, I felt that I didn't matter very much. Or when you sided with your sister over me, I felt I was less important to you than her, and that hurt my feelings. And much of the time you find the other person simply doesn't know this or assumes that you agreed with them. Uh, again, in caring relationships, uh, that's generally the case. And sometimes people forget, goodness me, none of us are perfect. So. But you do that, explain how you feel. Um, and avoid value judgments. Now, a value judgment is when you apply blame and accusation to what you say. In other words, you didn't just say, you know, this is how it made me feel. You, you, you then add to that and, and you condemn that person. And you say you did this because you 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 know, you're an awful person. Um, that's adding a value judgment. And you, if you want to sort things out, you want to communicate effectively, and at the end of the day you're both happy and you understand each other better, you cannot add value judgments. So, for example, you know, you did that because you're a lousy bitch and you don't love me. Or you were cheating on me with her, you bastard. Um, you know, those are value judgments. And never, ever, ever do that. Don't judge because if you do, you will have effectively closed all doors to fixing it. Now you think about it. What is he or she going to respond with? Why, well, yes, I am a hateful bitch. Uh, yes, you're right. I'm, I'm a cheating bastard and, you know, you should spit on me. I mean, what, what do you think they're going to say? You, you're not leaving any room for them. So they're not going to say that. All that will happen is they will go on the defensive. Um, and quite likely they're going to start lashing back out at you. So you're no longer working together, but you're merely attacking each other and you're pulling further apart from each other instead of getting closer. So don't do that. Now, acknowledge the feelings of your partner and cut them some slack. Now, feelings are normal. Feelings are natural. They're not bad, and if you never have feelings on purpose... If you feel hurt because your partner didn't appear to be listening to you, or if she felt jealous because you were looking at porn on the computer, then they are allowed to feel that way. They just do. And if you care about them and they about you, you will both want each other to feel happy and secure. Again, you know, putting value judgments and, you know, you're feeling that because, you know, you're weak or you don't trust me or whatever, that's it's not going to, you won't get anywhere that way. Now, 
you know, she should care enough about you to make you feel important. And you should value her need to be the only woman in your life uh, more than how much you like watching drag racing disco dollies do dubbo or, or, or whatever your, you know, whatever your porn favourites are. Um, you know, she's got a right to, she, she has a right to feel that way. And to those unfamiliar with the term, um, cut them some slack, uh, it, it just means don't, don't be too hard on them, you know, don't hold them to such a tight rein. You know, if they come from a different country and culture, especially if the relationship is less than a few years old, you will have habits and viewpoints developed before you met and it, and it will take time to get each other. And you, you should be patient and, again, you should be slow to judge. And, you know, try to understand them and tell them so. So if you get some new insight, uh, whether this is something you never knew before, something you probably should have known or something you knew but you weren't that attentive to, then speak up. Make it clear that it matters. Yes, I understand that watching the football all weekend when you didn't see me all week wasn't very loving. and You felt I was ignoring you. I'm sorry I made you feel that way. And I want to make it better. Or, or you know, I'm sorry I sent money to my sister without telling you. I've been a single woman for 30 years and I forget sometimes that things have changed. And I understand why this bothers you. Uh, and I will always discuss matters like you, like, sorry, I will always discuss matters like this with you in the future. Now, much better. Now, to the uninitiated, you have to admit this sounds pretty damn good, right? Um, could you remain angry and hurt when your beloved responded like the above? This is, an effect, this is effectively fighting fire with water. And coupled with that, it brings you closer together and helps you to actually get each other. Now, just remembering a, um, a manager I had years ago, and I remember asking him, OK, what happens when, OK, we make a mistake with a customer and the customer comes in and says, you know, you've... And they're really angry and they say, you know, you've messed up my order or you forgot this and, you know... He said, really simple, you admit it. He said, you say, yeah, you're right, I did. <laughs> I did, we forgot, we didn't do as good a job as we should have done, and I'm sorry, and we'll do everything we can to fix it. And sure enough, you do that, and you just watch that, per that person's anger just deflate in front of you. And, yes, well, you really inconvenienced me by doing that. Yes, I know, I know, I realise that. It was a stupid thing to, uh, uh, for me to have done. I'm really, really sorry. Um, and I, I realise that now, and... Look, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to, to, to make that right. And that person's, well, yeah, okay, well, yeah, see that you do. Yes, I'll do that. And that person walks out and, and they're not angry anymore. And it's exactly the same in a relationship. You, you do that and uh, you just acknowledge their feelings and go, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, ha I had no idea that I was doing that. You know, I, I understand your feelings. I didn't know it and, I'm, and thank you for telling me. Uh, and I, I'm going to stop doing that. Um, and where does the fight go? <laughs> it's gone. And you understand each other. You know, uh, I mean, she will understand or he will understand that, you know, you're, you're not, you know, you don't not care about them. You absolutely do care. You've understood them better. They, they've got across to you how they feel. And things are going to get better. It's marvellous. So, yeah, try it. <laughs> now, communication for Australian and Filipino couples. Uh, the comfortable way of dealing with hurt feelings is by great communication. And it won't happen, happen immediately in an Australian Filipino relationship, that's for sure. And starting a relationship ship by spending most of your time in different countries, this doesn't make it easier either. So, it will take time, but it should be your target, not, not your. You know, the point at which you expect that you will start and everything comes crashing down if that isn't the case. It should be your goal, it should be your target. And there is that basic difference between how Filipinos and Australians deal with confrontation and communication. And I most definitely have covered this before, as regulars will know. Uh, search the articles, search the Down on the Visa site, search the Filipino website, you'll see plenty of stuff there. 
Now, Aussies tend to be blunt and upfront about things. Filipinos, on the other hand, are very careful not to say hurtful and challenging things and will bottle things up. Ask what's wrong, and you'll generally get nothing or no answer at all. This may, be, this may actually be the first time in their lives that anybody's actually asked them this. I'm not joking there. Okay, so please be patient with each other and know that this, like the rest of your marriage, is a work in progress. Now, my wife Miller, first year of marriage, said to me, Husbands and wives don't discuss problems. My parents never did. Now, we discuss absolutely everything. Uh, and we very rarely tread in on each other's toes because of the work done by both of us over all the years. Um, I mean, we understand each other, you know, quite instinctively most of the time these days. Um, but it wasn't always that way. It, it took work. I understand, too, that neither of you will ever be perfect. Some stuff you really do have to just let go because there are enough good things to make the small things seem fairly insignificant. Now, I hope you can make this happen for each other. Good luck and have a great marriage. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of the Down Under Visa Philippines to Australia podcast series. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed and we hope you found this useful. Australian visas from the Philippines are not easy and the outcome matters as you well know. Please feel free to contact us anytime if you need some further help. And we look forward to talking to you again next time. Bye bye.